Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. A lot of hardware and software synthesizers will allow you to change their parameters with a MIDI controller and CC commands. CC is an abbreviation for continuous controller and usually they have a number and the value. For example, you often can control filter cutoff frequency with MIDI CC number 74. But on some synths, certain aspects of the sound can only be controlled with SysX data, which is a slightly more complicated protocol that often isn't supported by MIDI controllers. So I wrote another web script that will translate CC commands to SysX data. And I'll explain how I did that how to use it, and how you can develop it further if you want to. Today's video is sponsored by Van Goa, who sent me their VMK25 keyboard for review. This is a battery-powered 25 velocity sensitive keys keyboard with 8 assignable endless rotary encoder knobs and 16 assignable pressure and velocity sensitive pads. You can connect to other MIDI devices via USB Type-C or Bluetooth. There's a sustain pedal connection as well. The two pitch, bend and mod pads are responsive and precise and they're located top left of the keys so you won't accidentally touch them while playing. There are six menu buttons to select octaves, Bluetooth, Bank, Arpeggiator and Smart Scale or Smart Chord mode. The Arpeggiator is quite exquisite and even lets you record your own order of notes. Anything you might want to configure from swing over tempo to note length can be configured. Most importantly, the Arpeggiator is stable even when using Bluetooth. It can be synced to the tempo of your external sequencer as well. The Smart Scale function is quite unique as well and not found on many controllers. Basically, you can choose a scale and then every note you play will either fit into that scale or be transposed to the next best note that fits. Smart Chord lets you choose the type of chord you want to play, for example major, minor, the scale, 7th and 9th, and then you can press the keys to play the chord you chose. The Van Goa VM Key 25 is built solidly. The keys don't wobble and they're nice to play. The pads are responsive and they have aftertouch, which is a nice addition. I wish they had integrated at least a TRS MIDI connector, so you can just connect this to a hardware synth without needing to resort to a smartphone or computer. The 7 segment 3 digits display provides the most necessary of informations, but I've seen better. I would have liked the piano keys to have aftertouch instead of the pads, but then again Again, having that feature at all is a big plus. All in all, this is a good quality keyboard that's certainly worth the admission price. Many of the features you find here can only be found on competition of roughly 50% higher price. So today, as this video's title says, I'm going to use this to send SysX data to other synthesizers, though this keyboard technically can't do that. For this, I wrote a web media script that will take MIDI CC data provided by these endless rotary encoders here and convert them to SysX data. And why would that even be necessary, I hear you ask? Well, most synthesizers have a lot of possibilities to shape sound, but rarely each and every of these possibilities is represented by a hardware control. So manufacturers can resort to CC commands to let you control those options live on other controllers. CC is data sent over MIDI connection and it usually consists of the CC number and its value. And while this works perfectly fine, there are certain limits to using CC commands. First, due to the 8-bit nature of the MIDI protocol and the way the developers choose to use one byte of information to transmit both the number and the value in one packet, there's a maximum number of 128 different controls and values. Some of those CCs belong to a general MIDI standard that manufacturers have agreed upon, so things like mod wheel, sustain pedals, aftertouch, program changes, bank selections and so on will always work, regardless of the synthesizer or software you're using. So in order to control over MIDI, the functions of a synthesizer that are specific to a certain machine or its manufacturer, their system-exclusive messages, abbreviated SysX. I've talked about this in previous videos in detail already, so here's just a quick recap. 
SysX command are made of a number of bytes that have to follow a specific format. For you as the user, these bytes are written out in hexadecimal numbers. I'll use the Yamaha Reface DX synthesizer once again in this demo, which reacts both to CC commands and SysX commands. SysX messages always begin with F0 and end with F7. The age you see in many manuals refers to the fact that's a hexadecimal number used here, so you can leave that out when actually sending the commands. Okay, so the first byte is F0. The second byte is the vendor ID. Yeah, there's a table of vendors that have their own IDs in MIDI, and there's a page where you can look that up. Yamaha here is 43. Next up is the device number, and Reface DX listens to all of them, so let's use 10. Then there's the group and model numbers. In this case, 7F, 1C, and 5H. Now comes the important stuff, the command bytes. All previous data was necessary to tell your setup which device this SysX message is targeted at. But now we finally can specify what we want that device to do. So for example, to change LFO speed on the Reface DX, the four numbers are 30, 0, 12, and the current value of the control knob, which usually ranges from 0 to 127, representing the current position of the controller. After that, you can send the checksum value, but you can also leave it out, and then the F7 number, which marks the end of the SysX message. As keen-eyed viewers have spotted already, that's a whole lot of numbers to signal we want to change only one number, really. So SysX messages are quite inefficient compared to CC commands, but we can use this knowledge to apply life changes to sounds anyway. I'll do so using WebMIDI because you most likely have a browser at hand. As always, you can download the following example from my GitHub page and just open it in your browser if you don't want to follow my explanations. So the basic idea here is to read your MIDI controller, then wrap its value into the SysX command. I will do this in a single page app, which means all the code needed for the browser to display the app and run its logic will be in one single file. Let's start by creating the user interface. What we need is a menu to select your MIDI input and your MIDI output device. Then we need an input field to store the CC number we're going to capture from your keyboard. We also need a field where you can enter the first part of the SysX command that will be issued, then an area where the CC value is displayed, and another field for entering the closing part of the SysX command. And because we want to probably use more than one CC to SysX translator, I'll add a plus button that will add more rows to our control matrix here. We'll also want to forward all other MIDI commands from the input to the output so we can play notes, use the mod wheels and so on. I've given all of these input fields their own names and IDs, which is important for the program logic I'll add later. Right, now let's format all of this using cascading star sheets so it looks a bit nicer. And now let's add the code. So first of all, define some variables that refer to the MIDI input and output and the MIDI CC that the user is operating currently. And there's also a variable referring to the MIDI subsystem in general. Now, let's add a line that tells the browser to request MIDI access. We'll pass the SysX true parameter, so the user will be prompted to allow MIDI and SysX commands to be sent to his precious gear. We also tell the browser that it should trigger the onMIDI success function if successful and the onMIDI failure function if not successful, which means that we need to define these functions next. OnMIDI failure is easy, just write the error information to the screen or console or both. OnMIDI success naturally has to be somewhat more elaborate. First, we want to check the MIDI access object that this function takes as a parameter, so set the default MIDI input output to whatever is the first thing we find there. Next, we want to list all MIDI devices for input and output menus. Two for loops will do that for us. Next, we'll attach an event handler to those menus. If the user clicks that selection menu, 
We need to store the choice somewhere, so we grab that value and store it in the MIDI input and MIDI output variables we set up earlier. Notice that setup inputs command I've added there. We're going to write that function in a couple of minutes. Let's quickly finish this function here that cares about cloning that line of text inputs. It just copies the HTML code and changes the input field's names so that they can be referred to by my program later. Okay, now that setup inputs functions. Now everything you can do on your MIDI controller triggers an event in the web MIDI engine. So we can set up an event handler that does something when you do something. So the MIDI code for a CC command on channel 1 is 176. And to catch CC commands on other channels, you just add the number of that channel to 176 and with a maximum number of 16 MIDI channels, we then land at 191. The first thing we want to do is to implement a simple MIDI learn function. So the browser has an active element that's where the cursor is currently placed. So if the cursor is sitting in one of those CC fields and the user is working a CC control, catch the number of that control, write it into the field and then immediately move the cursor somewhere else. Also, we'll name the matrix row with that control number so we can refer to it later. Next, we need to read the user input in the SysX fields, strip all white spaces from them and concatenate them into one cohesive SysX command and send that command to the MIDI output. Also, any command that is not a CC command will be forwarded directly to the MIDI output. Yep, and that's it basically. One could improve on this by using local storage to remember the user's inputs and setups, but for the purposes of this video, this will do. You are very welcome to expand upon my idea over on GitHub. Let's take a look at two examples how to put this script to use. The Van Gogh keyboard here is connected to my smartphone using a USB hub, as is the Reface DX. And as I said previously, the first part of the SysX command is f 43 f one c 5 30 00 and 12. Those numbers representing the SysX start, vendor ID, device number, group number high and low, device ID and the three command bytes. So enter this into the first field. The actual data is read from your controller in real time, so next just enter F7 into the second field. Now place the cursor in the CC field and turn a knob. And there you go, you now can control LFO speed on the Reface DX. Let's add one more controller to control LFO depth for operator 2. Click the plus button and then again the SysX command starts with F0, 43, 10, 7F, 1C, 05 but then continues with 3, 1 followed by the number of the operator 01 and OE then the actual control value and then 7F. So enter F0, 43, 10, 7F, 1C, 05, 31, 01, OE into the left field, and then 7F into the right field, place the cursor into the CC field and turn the second knob on the Van Gogh keyboard. I'll show some more examples now without any further commentary, but you can see the SysX command and what they do on screen.
Yep, yeah, and that's it for today. A MIDI CC to SysX translator using WebMIDI and the Van Gogh VMK25. But you can really use any other MIDI controller you have in your home. So if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.